here it is. This is the Focus Red Sapphire Pro 40. Look at it. It's pastel blue. We got things to play with. So let's get to it. Starting over here on the left, we have the first two combo jacks. They're in the front. I do like to see that, man. And something I don't like to see. I, that banked phantom power. One through four, four through eight. But hey, it's there. There's your controls. You have insert and pad lines for preamps. One and two. Three through eight. You just get a knob. One through ten. That's the thing. Uh, nothing special about that. But we do have a nice little metering section. What do we have? One, two, three, five LEDs. They light up. They do what meters do. And you have your um, active and locked. Then over your monitoring section, you have a dim and mute. And two headphone jacks. Yeah. Nothing terribly special. But you do have that front power switch, which I'm a fan of. On the back, internal power supply. Always like to see that because we don't have anything random hanging out of the back or something to lose. Regular MIDI, spit of, you have Firewire, you have Firewire, pass through, optical, in and out, that's going to give you 8 in, 8 out. And um, outside of your standard monitoring, you do have, you can just see that, that's what that's going to control. But, what do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, well, we have 8. That's what it is. And there's the rest of your combo jacks. It pulse audios like you would expect. You have input, output, nothing fancy. Like with most audio interfaces, pulse audio really doesn't know what to do with it. But if you plug it in, you can make it make sounds and it will record stuff. Let's take a look with A Play L and that's going to give our devices in, devices out, also sees it. So we should be able to get some type of information from also Mixer. These are our basic controls. I guess this would be handy if you wanted to set up 5.1 surround zone or something like that. But yeah, it's there. Personally, this is the route I prefer to go. Jack all the things. We're just going to be using cadence with the box standard settings using the photo drivers. And you can see it starts right up. I'm at 128.48k. That block latency is 2.7. You can see the Pulse Audio Jack Bridge has kicked in. It has connected, being dumb as a brick, and connecting to our first two ins and first two outs. Moving on, and unfortunately, unfortunately, this is where everything goes wrong. Fado Mixer. Yeah. This is, um, if you're going to be dealing with a FireWire device on Linux, this is what you have to tangle with if you have an internal DSP inside the device. This, this is giving me flashbacks to my M-Audio 2626 with this mind-numbing, confusing setup. It doesn't even work like you would expect it to work. You can decrypt it with a little bit of trying. However, I have to point out that Fado Mixer does not always save internally to the device. It does it only what it wants to. And if we kick it up to 96, you can see some of the channels, the ins and outs change. You have to redo everything after you do that. And I'm just not going to do that. So that's not going to be uh, our round trip latency test is going to be void of 96K. Moving on, this is our standard 15 minute torture test. I've loaded into a real podcasting recording session for the internets, loaded it up with as many inputs and outputs as I had available. The goal of this, we're just trying to see if we can get it to generate some X runs. And it didn't. Good on it. This is our round trip latency test at 44, 1 and 48. We're seeing exactly what we would expect to see with any Firewire device under Linux. Not bad at all. First, we have a new contender. This is the Amazon Basics Dynamic Microphone. You can pick one of these up for about 25 wet, stinky American caches. This is plugged directly into the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40. It is a dynamic microphone requiring what I can only guess to be roughly 48 to 50 dB of gain to get up to mic level, but it didn't come with documentation. That's just a guess. Up next is the Pod Classic, the Audio Technica AT2020 condenser microphone. Yeah, this business, you've had one, maybe you do, maybe you don't. They get the job done, they're reasonably inexpensive, they do require phantom power and about 35 to 40 dB of gain, but this particular one is plugged directly 
into the Focus Ride Sapphire Pro 40. And finally, we have the Golden Age Project D2 Dynamic Microphone. Um, this is what I can really use on the show. Uh, you can't beat it for the price. It's almost maxing out the preamp on the Sapphire Pro 40. This needs uh, about 53 to 56 dB to get up to line level, pushing this thing on about 8.5 out of the available 10 number. I don't know why people, or manufacturers just actually put like dB ratings on it. Be good people. And there we go. That's everything I was able to find out about the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 under Linux. Now, I was going to do a test for line input using guitar, but I'd switched it around to 96K and it lost all of my settings and it refused to save them once I reapplied them. So I gave up. That's something that just happens with this device under Linux. What nopes? There is no way to factory reset from Linux. There's not a take two switch. Keep that in mind. The internal mixer is only going to save when it wants to. That's an issue. No 96K because of that moon routing. Um, I was unable to decipher what I needed to change after putting it in 96K. And you no know way to bypass the preamps. So if, you're gonna, if your plans are to use it as analog digital converter, keep that in mind. Let's talk about what works. ADAT, it works. MIDI, it works. Those preamps, 55 dB of gain. And they're not horrible preamps. Actually, in 2020, they're usable. They don't get real hissy until right at the end. And most importantly, this device will probably outlive you. Unfortunately, that's going to be mostly due to you not wanting to use it. Now, at the end of the day, what can you expect to pay for a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 on sites like eBay and Reverb? They go for anywhere between 120 all the way up to $400. Don't buy one. I'm just going to say that. You know what? This is a budget interface from 2009, and it is way overpriced um, for what it can deliver in 2020. There are better, cheaper options. That said, if you're stuck with one, it can be made to work with Linux, and you can get by until you can get something better. Um, most most of this is due to that Moonglyph DSP routing and just the fact that I can't get it to reliably save. So I can't recommend it. But, you know what I can recommend? Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, where all of the beautiful party people help make this show possible. They really do. Where I have the studio space and the equipment. Uh, granted, this is a side project that I'm just doing to try to get information out there for I'm trying to keep some of this hardware out of landfills, out of dumps and in the hands of people who want to make music, audio, and all the other fun jazz involved. Um, if you want to help me support that, help me support LinuxGameCast.com. Tap that Patreon button or um, buy some merch. I think we, we have stickers. Look at that. Ha! But all these glorious people um, making it all happen. There's also a list uh, for newer interfaces, USB, stuff like that. I'm getting to that. Everything I pick up, you might notice there's a theme. It's wicked cheap because I'm just doing this out of my own pocket. But if you see anything on that list, uh, send me a note, like something you're looking for. I might be able to pick it up and give it a look. But as always, I got to get out of here. But I want you to get out there and... Um, Use what you have. Use the gear that you have and keep making awesome stuff with it. That's just what you can do, man. So get out there. Keep being awesome. <laughs>